All right guys, so in this video, we're gonna walk through the ABCs of how to create a pack mod. We're gonna use a weapon asset for this, something that's very simple and something basically anybody can do as long as they know what they're looking for. Now you will need access to the actual game assets. So if you do not have those assets dumped yet, I'll go ahead and I'll link the file in the description below so that you can watch that video first to learn how to do that. Now once you have the files dumped, all you're gonna wanna do is go to the location of the file that you wish to go ahead and modify. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and modify a B50 for the game so that it's weightless, has no kick or sway, um, increased projectile counts, power, and maybe change the name of it. So you can do this one of two ways. Either you can open the asset editor and just select the file from there, or you can open your actual dump itself and locate the folder and file from there. But we'll go ahead and use the asset editor for the sake of this video. Now to begin with, like always, make sure you have the correct build for the engine, which is 4.13. We'll go ahead and blow that up. Now when creating a mod, you're always going to remember what folder path that asset is in whenever you open it and modify it. Because whenever you go to save it and actually pack that mod, you need to recreate that folder path for the pack file itself. And we'll get into that at the end of this video. But for now, let's go ahead and go to File, Open. And I have it on the desktop. And then you're going to go to State of the K2, Content. And these are all of the folders containing the game assets. Now, for the weapon mod that we are going to do, we're going to want to go to Items, Ranged Weapons. And this is a list of all of the ranged weapons in the game. I believe there are around 230 or so of them total. And we're going to go for the B50. And in here you'll have your header list and stuff like that, but that's some stuff we'll get into for another video. So what we're going to go for is we're actually going to look for all the resources for the weapon. So go ahead and you're going to want to drop these down until you see the resource. And this is all of the different parts of the weapon functionality for each weapon right here. So what you're looking for is the float value in here. And as you can see, this is going to be full auto rounds per minute and it's set at 400. You can raise this if you want, but do not go over 1400. We used to be able to set this higher than that, but they have changed something in the game's functionality that will make the game crash the very first time you fire the weapon if you go over this number. And you could also change that same thing for first rounds if you wish the weapon to have no sway no kick anything like that you'll want to change all of these numbers to zero kick snap time put that at zero if you wish even the whole time the kick angle if you click on something and it does not have a flow value there, there's just nothing to edit, so don't worry about those. Usually you'll see a number one by them. If it has a number two, usually it will have a flow. Go ahead and get rid of this kick angle too. Projectile count is how many projectiles you wish to come out of the barrel every single time the trigger is depressed. So when you press on the trigger, how many bullets do you actually wish to leave the barrel? Um, you can raise this to about 8 or 12. Past that point, you may have some stammering in your graphics if you have a potato PC. Plus, the game itself really only recognizes about 8 to 12 projectiles hitting a wall any one time before the engine kind of recycles and just clears them off. So if you wish, you can go ahead and put that at, say, 8. Now, that is not how many bullets it's using out of the mag each time. That is only altering how many projectiles actually leave the weapon itself. If you wish to go ahead and change reload duration, you can change this a bit. I'm not sure exactly how fast you can get it to go, but just changing this number before the animations itself can't keep up. But we're not going to do that because we won't need to reload this weapon. Ammo consumed per shot. So every time you depress that trigger, how many rounds is it taking away from the mag itself? We don't ever want this weapon to run out of ammunition, so we are just going to go with zero.
you can go ahead and change the spread on this between whenever you are firing. Now being we have no kick, no sway, we do have multiple rounds leaving at one time, but I'm not going to mess with that right now because the only way to show any real difference in that would be to do this multiple times and we're just not going to do that. When it comes to stuff like cone impact, anything to do with cones really, that's all going to be for shotguns right here, so you will not need to mess with this when it comes to any of the assault weapons, handguns, sidearms, anything like that. But we can also come down and you can change the impact. Now you will notice that there's an impact and impact delta. Knockdown, knockdown, delta. Dismember and delta. The actual impact, knockdown, and dismember are how that bullet interacts with the enemy that it's hitting. Whereas the delta is basically how it interacts with the world around it, such as signs, walls, fences, stuff like that. So you don't have to necessarily change the deltas in these if you don't want to. But typically, we usually go ahead and match them up close to at least with whatever it is we are changing the impact to. Now, the engine's only going to recognize so high of a number. If you put 10 trillion on there, it's just not going to do anything. But I mean, if you want to go ahead and, and a small increase on this will make a huge difference. So if you want to go ahead and just change that to, say, put it at a 10, which is pretty high. And for the deltas, usually I'll do something about half that, if that even. A lot of times I don't even change these. It's like with this member, it's already set at 20, so I mean, we can raise that to 40 if we wish. It's really not going to make much difference because there's not going to be much dismembering going on when we're killing enemies off that fast. And when it comes to these values, this is just something you'll have to adjust to get it to how you wish to have it. There is no right or wrong answer for these. Each mod needs to be particular to how that person's taste is. So play around with it, see what works for you. You also have penetration. Put that as a 200. And you can go much higher than that. Fall up distance is how far that bullet's going to travel before it starts to have bullet drop. So you can increase this if you wish. Range is the total range of that projectile. Now, you will notice on here that there are two weights. There was a weight here and a weight down here as well, weight info. This is the weight of the actual weapon itself. So if you wish to have a, a truly weightless weapon that's going to display that way in the game, you do need to change both these because this weight info will go to the UI in the game. So if you just change this one to a zero, but you have not changed this one down here, the UI will still show that it weighs that much even though the weapon itself actually has no weight. You can change how much that weapon is worth if you wish to sell it in-game. You do not need to mess with durability if you want to make an unbreakable weapon. The only thing you need to mess with is durability lost per shot. We're going to change that to zero for both of these, the minimum and the max. Now you have a weapon that never loses durability no matter how long that you use it. The perception loudness is how loud that gun is perceived in the game to enemies. And if you wish to get into something a little more detailed and stuff like that later on, we can actually go into switch ammo classes and stuff like that, but that'll be for another video. Now if you wish to change the actual display info that's going to appear in the game, you can actually change the name of the weapon and the description type itself. This little formula right here at the end has to do with it pluralizing how many of those weapons are actually in your locker, so you don't need to mess with that formula. You'll just mess with that part right before it.
and that's pretty much it right there. So now when you want to actually save this and create a pack mod out of it, remember you're going to want to actually recreate the path that the actual asset came from itself. So if you wish to do this, say on your desktop itself, which you don't have to, you just go new folder and you'll start with state of decay two. And if you look up here, you can actually see starting at state of decay two, where that asset came from, including the name of it. content items ranged weapons and then you actually want to type in the name of the asset itself that is saved. Now if you want you can go ahead and close this down and you can find where it is you created that folder path open it up and make sure that it looks right to you content items ranged weapons and there's the B50. Go ahead and open up the asset editor go to functions package folder and for now we have ours on the desktop of course and you'll go ahead and just select that state of decay 2 folder and go select folder it'll say pack file created in selected directory go OK and close that down and if you were to open this back up you'll see that there is now a pack mod located right there and you can go ahead and rename this to whatever you wish And the first three digits right here are actually going to dictate the load order, which you probably already knew. But we'll just put it at all zeros for now. Then you'll want to go ahead and get that into the pack folder location. If you have a mod manager, go ahead and use that if you so wish. Or you can do it manually by just simply copying it over there. So if you wish to, you can just copy that file. users, username, app data, local, state of the K2, saved, and copy it there. Then we can open up the game. And now any B50 that you actually have in the game now will all register as that weapon that you made that create that you have created that pack mod for.
I may just have thought of a solution. Hmm. You find a character I think has one on it. Yeah. Okay. This would help if we actually changed it. No sway. No sway. No kick. And the weapon never loses any ammunition. That's it. That's all there is to it, guys. Now let me know, guys, if these videos are actually something that you are interested in and if you want to go a little more in-depth on. Um, we can do things like spawn mods or maybe facility mods if you wish to change how facilities work or if you want to change the actual um, spawn rates themselves to a different number of enemies. Um, but either way, that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. This is Texas Digital Gaming. Out. Is it gold? Is it gold?